Atlanta since they got the samples? If there has been, Alan, I haven't heard about it. Excuse me, do I wait? Yes. Monica? Yes. Monica, I saw Tracy leave the hospital a few minutes ago. Did you two have another argument? Oh, no, nothing like that at all. As a matter of fact, I'm sorry for her. She's terribly worried about your father. Monica, I think I warned you once before that pity is a very dangerous sentiment where Tracy is concerned. You're asking for trouble. Well, I'm not in this case. She really is terrified, Alan. I think you could have been a little gentler with her when you told her. Yeah. Yes, I guess I should have been. Where's she gone? Well, she told me to tell you she needs some time to uh, pull herself together before she sees Edward. I understand. She and Dad have always tried to put up a front for each other. It's part of their relationship. One will never let the other catch them in a moment of weakness. <laughs> Miss Fleming. Hello, Dory. This is Bobby. Hello. Monica. How are you? What's all that? Oh, uh, the latest bulletins to be handed out. Steve's orders to keep everybody informed. Anything from Atlanta? No, not so far. And from what Steve tells me about Mrs. Hewitt's condition, she doesn't have much of a chance. He talked to us as soon as he had a chance to go over the tests carefully. Yes? Where's Dad now? Oh, he took a cab back to the hotel. He said he was tired and he'd meet us back there later. Okay. Well, as soon as we get Rick's report, I'm going to have to call Mother and tell her what's happening. Yeah, that's a good idea. How soon do you think it'll be? Well, I don't think it's going to be until later this afternoon. I know I'm scheduled to meet Rick in surgery in half an hour. I'm sure he won't have been able to go over the results by then. No, I don't suppose he will. But I, I want to see Scotty and Gail first. Okay. Listen, incidentally, I talked to Steve. I volunteered my services to him and told him I would do anything I could to help him get through this emergency. Well, that's very nice of you. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Still no word from the lab? No, no, there's still no word. Oh, you just feel the tension here. You're absolutely right. It's, it's in every corner on everybody's face. I must say, Steve's done the most wonderful job in organizing things here. They're running as smoothly as they possibly can under these circumstances. I'll tell you what. Let us order in a quiet dinner in the apartment tonight, and we'll talk to Dad once we get Rick's report. Well, that's a good idea. Uh, I, I think we'd better get in touch with Tracy before she decides to make other plans tonight. Yes, I guess so. Well, I can call her at the hotel, but... Um, I'm not sure she's going to be in. I can leave a message for her to call me back. Well, I'm sure she'd want to be there when we talk to her. She'd never forgive us if we didn't let her know. Tracy, quarter me sweet, please. I see. All right, I'll call her back. Line's busy. Nothing new. Uh, how long have you been here? Just, just a few minutes. I just took a break from the clinic. I just, uh... Well, I just couldn't think about anything else but me. Look, why don't you get somebody else to take over for you down there until he gets through the crisis? It'd be a lot easier on you. When I may do that, I mean, Dr. Peterson, he's been helping me. He offered to take over and... Gail, hey, come on now, you have to hang on. Or you're going to get sick yourself, you know. I'm... Jeff. Jeff? Jeff, any news about me? Well, no, I'm, I'm afraid I don't have any any changes to report on Lee, but uh, Mrs. Hewitt is dangling by a thread. Is it that serious? Yeah, yeah. Lombard and Steve are in with her right now, and we've come up with a new symptom. I'm on my way to report it to Dan so we can pass it along to the health department people. What kind of symptom? Well, it's a rash, a small patch of discolored skin on the thigh, with very minute little veins like hemorrhages underneath the surface. Well, does that do anything to help the diagnosis? No. It hasn't helped Lombard at all. Uh, you know, the craziest thing about this whole thing is that, well, which, with each new symptom, it, well, we just get more and more mystified. Listen, um, I gotta run. I really wish I had more to tell you. I'll talk to you later. Huh? Uh, look, guys, uh, waiting for me to scrub. So I guess I'll see you later. Sure, sure, you go ahead. 
But I'll check with you right after I get out of surgery. See if there's any changes. Let's just hope by then we've heard from Atlanta. I certainly hope so. You know, I just keep wondering why... Why Audrey's niece went in there with Jeff a few minutes ago. I mean, Steve has been so stringent about even allowing regular hospital personnel inside. I know, that is strange. Well, I gotta run now. I'll see you later. Yeah. Monica? Yeah. Um, give a minute. No, what is it? Well, um, has Rick said anything to you about uh, Laura and me? Well, to be frank with you, uh, we've barely seen each other today. Like everybody else in this hospital, he's been uh, preoccupied with what's going on. Why? Well, it's just that Laura's a little worried about how he's going to react now that uh, we're free to get engaged and get married in June. She wants to make sure that it's going to be okay. I see. Look, I'll tell you what. If uh, I get a chance and if the opportunity presents itself, I'll put in another good word for both of you. How's that? Thank you. I appreciate anything you can say or do. Well, I won't forget. I want to see the both of you together, too. I'll see you later. Uh, Keep your fingers crossed. Half hour before she comes around, I think her condition is stable enough. You can start making arrangements to get her back into her own room tonight. I'll take care of it, Dr. Weber. Okay. What about the IV? Oh, it's just the way it is for now. Thank you. What are you thinking about? Oh, a lot of things, mostly doctors and their uh, limitations. It was a good surgery. What are you unhappy about? Not unhappy, Monica. Just thoughtful. You, uh, you become a doctor. You learn how to save a human life by learning all the skills that it takes to operate on the most delicate organ of a person's body. And when it gets to other areas, you find you're just as helpless as anybody else. Because I haven't discovered that uh, surgery is, isn't next to godliness. Hi. You're thinking very profound thoughts for this late hour. Uh, what hour am I supposed to have profound thoughts? <laughs> you got me on that one. But you aren't talking about surgery, obviously. What are you talking about? Are you worrying about Laura and Scotty? Yeah, partly, because however it turns out, I'm going to end up being the heavy in this piece because I'm the one who flatly told her that I thought it was wrong that she gets married to Scotty now. You know, what I can't seem to make her understand is I feel this way because I love her. I don't want to see her get into something that may hurt her a lot more down the line somewhere. I think she feels that I'm being stubborn and narrow-minded just for the fun of it. Rick, are you so sure that you're right? I have always been right with Laura, haven't I? Well, in this instance, I think you should entertain a thought that you aren't. I mean, Rick, how can you say that it, it wouldn't help Laura's whole sense of security to be married to someone who loves her so? My mind tells me that isn't necessarily true. Oh, your mind tells you. Does that mean that you're not listening to your heart altogether? No, it doesn't mean that, mind. Well, I hope not. It would be a shame to be ruled entirely by your head. Do you mean my head or heads in the general? I was speaking in the general sense in this case. Well, I don't see anything wrong with behaving intelligently. I was talking about behaving intellectually. If you do that, you're going to miss an awful lot that life has to offer. But part of the fun is responding to things emotionally. I think that you have suffered a great deal in life because you have put far too much emphasis on your emotional reactions to people and things. Okay. Guilty as charged. What I'm saying, Rick, is that there ought to be a balance. Of course, Monica. Look, I am dealing with two very emotional women right now, and yes, I do have to maintain some kind of sensible balance between the two of them. Okay. If you want to be the voice of reason, fine. But while you're trying, just don't lean too far over in that one direction yourself. If you can get pretty distorted from just one vantage point, Rick. I'll think about that. Look, uh, why don't you take off? I'll stay with Mrs. Flynn until she's ready to be moved back to her home.
If you don't mind. No, of course not. I would like to take Leslie home. She's been here since seven this morning. Okay. Uh, give my love to both Leslie and Laura. I will. Thank you again, Monica.